there's nothing more delicious than fresh food from your garden and I'm standing in a showcase right now. We're in Knoxville at the UT Gardens and my special guest is James Newburn, who is the interim director of the gardens. James, thank you for being our guest. Well, we're excited to have you here, Tammy. We watch your show all the time. I <laughs> love this garden. Well, thank you. So thank to, you. talk to me about the, this kitchen garden because it's very unique. Well, this kitchen garden is designed to display um, vegetables, fruits, edible flowers, herbs. So it's really, as opposed to the conventional farmer's vegetable garden, right. um, we're kind of showcasing how a suburban or urban gardener might use raised beds to grow vegetables for the family. And you say you've got about uh, roughly half an acre here just for the kitchen garden. Just for the kitchen garden, right. And it's all fenced in and um, we try to keep the critters out of it. <laughs> uh, but yes, it's, it's a substantial vegetable garden um, with over 55 um, beds in it. We particularly pay close attention to smaller fruits and vegetables. So we're not going corn or anything like that. Um, beans that may take an awful lot of s space. What we do uh, concentrate are uh, small fruits. We grow a lot of all American selection winners that are designed for high yield um, and good flavor. And so right here we have the um, pepper, the dragonfly pepper, which is an All-American selection winner from um, just a few years back. So you've got, what I like here is that you've got things not just in mass. So you've got, you've right. got things planted together that you normally probably wouldn't see in a and, large garden, but in a home garden for sure. Right, and that's kind of part of our integrated pest management, having peppers and onions together so that we don't get a big mass of peppers that might attract a big mass of aphids. So you want to kind of space your vegetables out and intermix them with either flowers to attract pollinators and perhaps predatory insects with your other uh, plants. It's really a matter of kind of mimicking nature. And so we have a variety of plants interplanted with others so that perhaps um, what might be damaging to a squash plant, like the squash bug, right. we are trying to attract the um, predator of that squash bug by planting plants that, um, that would be attractive to that um, predator. So, so not only does that give you pest control, but it also gives you variety within the beds. You know, you can work with that in such an aesthetic manner that, you know, uh, gardening is the art and science of horticulture. And um, this interplanting can really answer both um, concepts, you know, the right. science up behind it, and then you can be artistic with it. You see in a lot of our garden beds, we have really geometric shapes and all, and it's all part of the integrated process. I love fresh fruit, and boy, does this look like it's just a happy clam. <laughs> it is, it really is. This is one of our many figs. Um, figs, of course, if you get the right one, are hardy um, in East Tennessee and across Tennessee. This is um, Martha Ball Washington. It originally came from George Washington's wife, Martha, um, from her uh, property. And so we're happy to have that here. And it is hardy like a brown turkey or so um, and produces tons of figs. And so, you know, we anticipate fig newtons for everyone <laughs> as we progress into fall. Um, I love it. And it's married to an unusual partner here. Right, this is hazelnut. You don't usually typically think of hazelnut growing in the southeast. Um, commercially, hazelnuts are grown in Oregon, Northern California, but hazelnuts do survive here and do um, produce. And so this is um, kind of the um, precursor uh, to the nut part of the hazelnut that will come on. Which is actually beautiful. It looks like a bloom. It does, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And you know, it has beautiful fall foliage too. 
tell us about how you utilize vertical plantings because that really saves some space in the garden. You know, and that's really important, Tammy, um, for the urban and suburban gardener, that you have limited space, so you need to think vertically up as well as what you can do out. And so, for instance, this structure that holds the um, purple hyacinth bean vine um, acts as a um, support for the vine, but yet adds a nice um, aesthetic touch to the garden as well, provides needed shade when you're out here working in the garden. Right. And so we have that. Um, some of our tomatoes are grown vertically, the non-determinant type that just keep vining. And then also breeders recognize um, as well the um, importance of um, smaller, more compact plants um, for the homeowner that um, needs those conditions. So we're seeing dwarf blueberries that you can grow in a container. We're seeing um, small, narrow, columnar um, apples and crab apples that can just grow straight up um, so that um, that space is really utilized to the best advantage it can be. And beautifully, I might add. And beautifully, of course. <laughs> Herbs are my love. And I think this could be the biggest rosemary plant I've seen in a very long time. It's beautiful. It is, it is. And I'm sure with your cooking expertise, um, you know, people are just really anxious to have their own fresh herbs. And our garden here um, at UT has a lot of uh, herbs in our collection. So this is a hardy rosemary. Boy, you can use this, you know, mm. the skewers, the bare uh, bones for the skewers, um, or just harvest a few leaves. Um, and um, you've got rosemary, we've got oregano, we've got thyme, basil. Um, there's some new basils that are resistant to the downy mildew problem that we've had recently. Um, all American selection um, discovered that. And then, you know, we've got all kinds of mints that are fun to make tea. Yeah. Um, and so here we have spearmint and you can smell it. We've just been admiring it ourselves, haven't we? I can't not do this. And, it's just so uh, much. Uh, you know, and so people are really um, making infused drinks now, but having those fresh ingredients in your culinary and your um, beverages um, is just really um, an added bonus. And when you grow it yourself in your own little garden, in your own little container, it means so much more. It tastes better. It does. It does. <laughs> and how nice that you also donate herbs to the we food do. bank because they need the, those fresh in, in herbs as well. It, exactly. You want to cook with fresh basil. You may have your grandmother's um, spaghetti sauce recipe and you need fresh basil. We provide that for you. A great example of just how diversified this kitchen garden is, is just what we've got in eye shot. So we've got thornless blackberries that are along the, the fence row there that yields right straight into the okra and cilantro here. And James, I'm falling in love with this variety of okra that you've got planted here. It's nice and compact. It is. It's an All-American Selection winner. Um, it's called Candlestick and um, it is a more compact um, plant, uh, so it's easier to harvest. And um, the candlestick comes from uh, the okra. It's very upright, um, and it does kind of look like a candlestick. It does. Um, but the, the okra pods themselves um, are just very uh, showy ornamentally, as well as a culinary favorite. I love red pods. So they, they start out green and then they turn turn red. I just love right, that. Right, right. But our whole garden, we look to provide um, year-round interest, either for the visitor, but for wildlife as well. 
So we don't cut down anything once the frost kills it. We let the birds harvest the marigold seeds. We let um, the critters find shelter from the winter. So we really do a spring cleanup as opposed to a fall cleanup. And some people might say, well, doesn't that allow for insects to take hold with their larvae? Um, if we've balanced our garden right, the beneficials are overwintering just as much as the harmful ones are. And so creating that um, kind of ecosystem that's well balanced is what we're looking for in this type of garden. And you know, like we were talking about rosemary, you can harvest rosemary at any time of year and it's still going to be good. And you know, rosemary is the herb of remembrance and I am so going to fondly remember the time here in this garden. Thank you so much for being our guest, James. It's just been a delight. Well, uh, Tammy, thank you so much for coming here. Um, just uh, so people know, the garden is open 365 days. Um, the public is welcome and it's free to come in and take a look. And it's worth the trip. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.